Hello Grade 9s and welcome to your second lesson for Term 1 Grade 9 History. In this lesson we are going to discuss the causes for the Second World War. In the first lesson we discussed the basics of the war. Who, where, when, just to form a foundation for Lesson 2, 3, 4 and 5. So how does a war of this magnitude start? There were many reasons for the outbreak of the Second World War but we're only going to tackle four of them in this lesson. Okay, it's important for you to know that this is an overview of the Second World War. I'm not going to go into all the details. It's important, therefore, for you to go through your textbooks. Watch the videos, read your textbooks, and then you'll understand the textbooks so much better. So in this lesson, we're going to start with the Treaty of Versailles. Then we're going to look at Germany after the First World War, economically and politically. And then we're going to look at the rise of totalitarian regimes across the world. So if we want to discuss the causes of the Second World War, we have to start with the First World War. With a timeline behind me, 1914, that's the start of the First World War. It ended in 1918. And the Second World War started in 1939. Now let's look at the link between these two wars. So in the First World War, the Allied powers fought against the Central powers and have a close look at which countries fought against each other. The Allied powers won the First World War. Now take note that Germany was on the losing side. And not only were they on the losing side, they were also considered the culprits for starting the um, First World War. And therefore, when they lost, they were also most punished by the Allied powers. How were they punished? By the Treaty of Versailles. So let's have a closer look at the Treaty of Versailles. So the Treaty of Versailles was a written agreement drawn up to officially end the First World War but it was also used to punish Germany for damages caused in World War I. And these punishments were severe, really intense and unbearable. This 240 page document with over 400 conditions was designed with the aim of weakening Germany so that they would never again be such a military threat. So this treaty didn't succeed at its goal, it actually led to the opposite. But let's look at the conditions to understand it better. Germany had to accept the blame for the start of World War I. It had to pay $31.4 billion in compensation to the Allies. That's over $400 billion in today's value. Germany had to cut its army from almost 2 million men to only 100,000 men. No submarines were allowed and no air force was allowed. Germany had to lose a significant amount of land and also all the colonies that they possessed. The treaty was drafted mainly by France, Britain and the United States. And Germany was forced to sign the treaty. So you may ask, how does this treaty that ended the First World War, how did that cause the Second World War? Let's look at the timeline. The treaty, or let's call it the punishment, was implemented after World War I. In this period, the punishment greatly suppressed Germany for years, and this led to a build-up of resentment and anger in the nation. Mixed with national humiliation for losing the war. And on top of this, it went really bad economically and politically after World War I. So during this time, Germany was miserable and really looking for hope. So due to the oppression of the Treaty of Versailles on Germany, caused Germany to become more vulnerable to follow an extreme leader like Hitler. But we're going to deal with Hitler in Lesson 3. So the Treaty of Versailles is definitely one of the most prominent reasons for the start of the Second World War. To make sure that you understand it better, if you are in the classroom, I'm going to have a couple of questions that you can have as a classroom discussion. Be sure to hit the pause button to discuss it in class. Here we go.
Okay, here are some possible answers for the questions that were raised. Be ready to pause. Okay, so we're talking about the causes of the Second World War and we've dealt with the Treaty of Versailles. Now we're going to move over to other important reasons for the outbreak of the war, starting with Germany's economy after World War I. Germany struggled economically. In 1923, Germany experienced hyperinflation. Now you probably don't know what hyperinflation means, but I will simplify it. Inflation decreases the value of a currency. So let me say that again. Inflation decreases the value of a currency. Or differently put, if you take 10 Rand, the worth of 10 Rand in 1970 is different to the worth of 10 Rand today. Let's look at an example. In 2010, a loaf of bread in South Africa cost around 7 Rand. And in 2020, the same loaf costs around 14 Rand. South Africa has an inflation rate of around 5%, meaning our currency becomes less valuable every year. Are you starting to understand? So imagine this inflation that usually happens over years happens over a few days. And that is hyperinflation. And that is very dangerous. And that is what happened in Germany. Now let's look at Germany. In January 1923, a loaf of bread cost 250 German mark. And in the same year, in November 1923, a loaf of bread cost 200 million German mark. Now that is hyperinflation at its worst. Your money will literally not fit in your wallet. You will walk around like they literally did, buying stuff with trolleys full of money. Between 1924 and 1929, Germany started recovering well. But then the world went into an economic depression. We call it the Great Depression. Now we're not going to go deep into the Great Depression. All you need to know at this stage is that the stock market in America crashed and that led to a global economic crisis. So let's summarize this section. In 1923, after World War I, hyperinflation hits Germany. It recovers a bit, and in 1929, the Great Depression hits. Now, you may wonder, how does such an economic crisis contribute to the outbreak of World War II? An economic crisis makes the public more vulnerable to choose a radical leader like Hitler. Okay, Treaty of Versailles done. The failing economy of Germany done. Now moving over to the governing body of Germany after World War I, which is the Weimar Republic. The Weimar Republic was the government that ruled Germany after World War I. And this government was responsible to implement the Treaty of Versailles. So the government was forced to impose this harsh punishment on Germany on their own people. So the Weimar Republic was hated by many Germans in this period of time as the government had to implement this treaty on its own people. So politically, what you need to remember is after World War I, Germany's government and political landscape was unstable. Okay, for a moment of time, let's zoom away from Germany after World War I and look at the political landscape outside of Germany, around Germany the League of Nations. After World War I, the League of Nations was established to maintain world peace and prevent future conflicts. The League of Nations failed. Germany's political landscape was unstable and many other countries' political landscape was also unstable. And in this time, totalitarian regimes rose. A totalitarian regime is a type of government where one leader or party has complete control over all aspects of the country. So after World War I, we had the rise of Hitler in Germany, Benito Mussolini in Italy, military expansion under Emperor Hirohito in Japan, Joseph Stalin in the Soviet Union, 
And so the world at this stage had a fair amount of dictators and this is a recipe for trouble. Which leads me to probably the biggest reason for the outbreak of World War II, the rise of this man, Adolf Hitler. And we will cover the rise and fall of Adolf Hitler in the following lesson. But let me end off with this metaphor. When there is a flu virus going around and if you eat unhealthy food and don't sleep well in this time, your immune system is weakened and it is more likely that you will get the virus. In the same way, these four factors that we discussed in this lesson weakened Germany and made them more vulnerable to the rise of a totalitarian regime. Thank you for joining us in this lesson. Remember to check the description for self-marking assessments and Google Slides. And we'll see you in the next lesson where we discuss the rise and fall of Adolf Hitler.